Wickström, myself, uh, Long Oyang, uh, Long is from Stanford, Jobo is from Uppsala, Claudio is from MSR, uh, Adam is from uh, Cambridge, and Marcin is from uh, Edinburgh, and I'm from Microsoft and, and Edinburgh. So what is this about? It's about regression. Uh, so, uh, in particular, linear regression. Uh, so linear regression is, is, a, is, a, is a general method for uh, modeling uh, so real-valued uh, variables as functions of, of other, other variables. Um, and the simple one is, uh, is this, where you've got a y that's being predicted in terms of an x. Um, and the idea is you've got these, the, the red points are the data you're trying to model, and the idea is we're going to try and fit a straight line to uh, that data. Um, and that straight line is going to have two coefficients. It's going to have an intercept, the alpha, where it hits the y-axis, and it's going to have um, a slope, uh, the, the, uh, the beta. And so if any particular point you're modeling is, is sort of built up from three components. There's the baseline alpha, and then there's x times beta, which gets you to the point on the line. And then there's always a bit of wiggle room necessary. There's a bit of noise. So we add a bit of uh, Gaussian noise there. So we do a draw from the Gaussian distribution. Um, so that's the idea of linear regression. Now, probabilistic programming uh, is uh, a general uh, field. It's got quite popular in the last few years, um, which is all about uh, defining machine learning models, such as regressions, um, as simple bits of code that if you run them forward, would sort of generate the data set. And then the task of a probabilistic programming system is to do that backwards. Um, take the data and the model and find the coefficients so as to make predictions. And so if you wanted to write um, regression in that style, you'd write code a bit like this. Um, this is in an ML-like language, um, and, but people use other syntaxes. And what this is saying is, first of all, we choose alpha, the uh, intercept, from a Gaussian distribution. And this one will come up a lot. This is a very wide Gaussian distribution. The, the, the statisticians call this an uninformative prior. So it's roughly speaking, it's, it's got a small chance of being almost any real number, positive or negative. Um, and beta, similarly, has a very wide um, distribution. And then we also uh, choose pi, which is the precision of the noise. It's sort of roughly the magnitude of the, the noise. So a small precision means there, there is a lot of noise. A high precision means there's very little noise. And this distribution here has, is, is a distribution over positive numbers um, and is also a, a non-informative prior. prior. It could be, could be almost any positive number. And then this code here is returning the two coefficients. They're the ones we want to learn. And it's also producing an array of outputs. Uh, it's, it's got an input x of array, a, 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 an input array x. Uh, and it's going to produce a bunch of, of y's. So together, that's going to be modeling the um, all these points, um, and and what it, and the, the code here is is just you know building up each one of the points by starting with the baseline alpha, adding x times beta for the particular z that, that's come from this um, uh, indexing here. So this is so z is just an, in, uh, an index that's going over my data set, which is a collection of students, um, and then we add in the noise. Simple, beautiful. I loved it. But then in another galaxy. There's a thing called R, which is very popular. It's not exactly probabilistic, um, but they've been looking at regressions for quite a while. And I heard about something called LM. So this stuff in R is written like that. Um, and this is really cool, being able to write it so succinctly, because they're getting at the idea that this particular model, it's, it's modeling y from x. And, it, and they just omit the coefficient, because there's always a coefficient. And they, they kind of by uh, uh, just default give it a, a, a y distribution. And then one is representing the intercept. So I was pretty gutted to see that. But I was even more gutted when someone told me, oh, you don't even have to write the one plus, because that's inserted by default. So they, you know, they got a 40% uh, decrease. And um, so you know, I thought, <coughs> you know, and these guys are super popular. You, know, you go search for LM or LMER, there's a bunch of packages. There's zillions of these models out there. They're really popular, they work. Data scientists like it. You know, when you're modeling a bit of data like that, you want to try one model, try another one. And so succinctness is really wonderful. You want to try different things and play them off against one another. So this pretty thing, although it's very explicit, is, has got too much boilerplate. So the goal of this, this uh, paper um, is to embrace and extend R's formulas to get better um, probabilistic programs. And what I'm going to do in the talk uh, is, first of all, uh, describe a calculus that we came up with, which we call the uh, regression calculus, which is formalizing R's syntax. Um, and I want to give you an idea for how that works and how we decompose the different parts of these linear models 
uh, into a calculus. And then the second part is how we apply that to extend one particular programming language uh, with, um, uh, with these uh, formulas, and we get um, some benefits of, of succinctness. Okay, so the regression calculus. I'm gonna explain this by example, but I wanted to put up some syntax. So a model is going to, generally, well, as, as you've seen, a, a model is written like this, y twiddles r, and r is a syntax of regressions. Um, and there's various um, components. I'm going to go through them. Um, and the, the regressions are also built up from predictors which represent individual values. And so a typical predictor might be one, such as we've seen, or zero. Um, and there also can be a variable. Um, what's new, you might ask, since you know, R has had these formulas for a long time? Well, a thing that uh, R doesn't have is the ability to specify priors in, you know, to be probabilistic within their language, and they don't have any way of defining hierarchical models um, where you use a regression to define another. And this is actually really powerful in practice. It's one of the selling points of probabilistic programming. So what we've done is taken R and, and taken a lot of the benefits of probabilistic programming and poked them into that, that formula language. And so we get this new construct here, uh, which is a, a coefficient. And, it, and what this is going to be is V, which would be typically 0, uh, well, 1, or, or a variable. And it's going to be multiplied by this coefficient and then the R there is going to define the meaning of the coefficient. So the R might um, give, for example, an uninformative prior to the, the coefficient. So that's the basic calculus. Let me go through um, step by step. But before that, I need an example data set. So here's a data set of um, the performances of students at a bunch of schools. And each student has been given a, a test before they start the school, uh, which is going to be the X. Um, and they're given a test afterwards at the end of the year, which is going to be the Y. So you, you expect there's going to be a linear relationship. Um, hopefully positive between X and, and, and Y. Um, but in addition, we have information, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different schools. So for every, every student, we know um, which school they belong to, and there's four different schools. And we also have some side information, that, uh, which, which is the average parental income uh, in, in each of the school catchment areas. So the data looks like this. If you're a data scientist, you should always start by looking at the data. I uh, hope you can see it here. Um, so a particular point there means that uh, this pupil has come in and they started with a score of 53 and they've come out with a score of 60. So they've improved. Um, and the color coding is showing that there's um, four different, the, the four different schools. And you can immediately see some sort of structure to it. That, that school A, the red school, seems to be doing a bit better. Um, it's sort of baseline down here seems to be a bit higher than the others. And if you look at the numbers, that would appear you know, to correlate with the, the, uh, the, the, the average uh, uh, incomes. So we'd expect to have a model that could represent that. So the point of my examples is going to be, build up to an, is, is going to, be to build up to an example that lets you do that. Um, all right. Um, and I'm going to have three variables in, uh, in, in question, U, S, and X, that correspond to the, the column of, uh, uh, of incomes, the, the, the column of schools, for each student and the column of uh, input grades. And then the task is gonna predict Y, which is gonna be a column of output grades, which is you know, what has been plotted here. So the first model, which, is, um, which doesn't actually work but it's a, on its own, but it's a, it's a component, um, is just to have a pure intercept, um, uh, just a line like that, which is not a good model of all the data because not everything fits on that line, but it's a good starting point. Um, and our syntax for that is, going, is, is this which illustrates our, our new construct for a, of a coefficient. So we're saying y twiddles this uh, regression, and the regression has got a predictor one, so that's just gonna be constant, and it's multiplied into the coefficient alpha, which is that guy, so we get, we get this plot. Uh, and alpha is going to be given, the, the coefficient alpha is going to be modeled by this um, regression, which is just a pure noise term, okay? So we can translate that into my probabilistic programming language, um, and, and you get that. So you're seeing we're already starting to get a fragment of the model that we, we started with. Um, and uh, this, this is a pretty common pattern, so we'll allow this abbreviation where we, we just drop that, and when that's dropped, we, uh, when you write it like uh, a coefficient without a model, you, you get this uninformative prior. Um, and then using that syntax, we get down to that. So we're already stealing some of R's um, compactness. Second component is noise. Uh, and we'll just use the query symbol for that. So query on its own is just a noise term. Now it's actually not primitive in the calculus. I, I won't give you the derivation because it's slightly complicated to explain in the time available. Um, but I hope you would believe me that it, it compiles down to this. So it, it compiles down to a bit of code that chooses the coefficient to be positive precision 
and then for each student just generates a bit of noise. So the, 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 the sort of data that we would model fr from this guy would look like this, so it's sort of zero mean noise, so it's positive and negative noise um, around the, the uh, x-axis. So again, on its own, not a very good model of our data. Um, the next thing is we can add two uh, uh, regressions together. And so I'm adding two, the two things that I've had so far together, um, and you get this. So basically, you're putting zero mean noise on top of the, the baseline, and so you're starting to get a simple linear regression that's just entirely flat, um, and that compiles down to this code. Um, and now, finally, we can get to where we started, which is uh, this model, uh, which is where we, we got a slope and an intercept. So we've got three terms. We've got the, the baseline intercept with coefficient alpha. We've got the slope uh, uh, with coefficient beta. Um, and we've got the noise term. And you see that this guy here becomes this guy down here. So uh, in, the, in the output, uh, for each uh, uh, student, we multiply their, their score um, by the, uh, the coefficient beta and then use that to, to, to build the model of the output. And we allow ourselves some more abbreviations. So in the calculus, we get down to something that's almost as simple as, as R. Um, I, I've kept in the noise because I find it useful to leave that explicit. Um, OK, now, remember our data. We saw those four bands. Um, you know, the behavior of, of students um, at different schools is not uniform. And we, we sort of thought that they, would have, they had different baselines. So now I want to have a bit of model that gives um, four different baselines, one for each of the schools. And, the way, and this is using a new construct that I haven't shown you before, which is written with this parallel symbol. So par acts on a regression, in this case, just a baseline. Um, and it, it, uh, uh, it sort of indexes it by the, uh, uh, the, 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 by, by, by the school. So the effect of this is, is it's going to make, instead of alpha being a single coefficient, it's going to become an array of coefficients, one for each of the, uh, of the schools. Um, and, 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 then the, and so then in the, the, the data model, for any particular student, we're, we're going to say they're going to model them by a point on the, the baseline for their school. So you, you would get this sort of thing. Um, and the semantics would, would look like this. Um, and the, the crucial thing here is that we're, we're now defining, instead of a single Gaussian for alpha, we get an array of uh, Gaussians for, for alpha. And then when we um, are modeling a particular student Z, we use S of Z, which is the school belonging to that, that that student belongs to, as an index to choose which of the alphas um, to use. OK, so back to my data, just to remind you um, that we, we, we were seeing these bands. Um, and I was suggesting that we've got these lines have got different baselines. So that for A seems to be down here on the x axis, on the, on the origin, and uh, B is down here, and C and D are sort of a little bit off the screen. Um, so now, uh, so this final model is going to be a, uh, a hierarchical model. Um, and this is a very powerful idea in statistics where you can use uh, regressions to model other coefficients. So, so far, the standard thing you'll have seen before, I'm sure, is regressions to finding observed data. But it also can be useful to use regressions to define coefficients themselves. So I, I don't really want these, um, these baselines um, to, to be... Um, uh, uh, to be flat, I want them to be, uh, you know, dependent upon the uh, the, the, in the average income in the uh, in the schools. So, um, so what we do is this: uh, we we we, uh, we we use a we, we go back to the coefficient syntax. So previously, in a coefficient like this, uh, the the body of the the the, the coefficient had a regression that was just a Gaussian, so it just, just chose it at random. Um, now we're going to use a regression to define the alpha, and we use this regression term here, which is another simple uh, regression, but this time in term, you know, with a, uh, a variable s s uh, with, a, with a slope b and an intercept a, but, it's, uh, but the slope now is governed by the, uh, the average income. So really, the picture is that we've now got two regressions, one here that is uh, predicting the unobserved parameters alpha, uh, one for each of the schools, um, as a function of their income. And that's what we're getting from this, this guy. And then we use that in, in this larger regression up here to define the coefficients. And then this thing up here is, is being defined by, the, uh, by, by, the whole, by this whole model there. 
Uh, and then if we translate this down to my, my language, uh, we, we get this, where we sort of concatenate together two regression models. Um, and you're starting to see the benefits of, of, of this notation, um, that it, it lets you, you know, simply build up this guy here that's got a lot of boilerplate in it um, without, um, well, just, just very, very succinctly. Okay, so, summary so far, we have a calculus. It has uh, um, uh, a syntax of regressions and predictors, and we've done a bunch of examples. Um, and this is the kind of thing a, a data scientist would do. They'd start with some data, they'd start, start with a simple regression and try out different models. And there's various ways of measuring the goodness of fit of a data set to a, to a model. And here I'm using something called um, the evidence. And the, the higher the value, the closer to zero, the better. So you're seeing that roughly speaking, as I put more stuff together, I got a better and better model. Um, and so uh, the, the, um, you, know, you can automatically um, compute the evidence, and so by just manually trying out different models and looking at the data, you can, you can get a better fit. So, so, so the, the, the calculus would support um, data scientists doing that. Um, just in terms of uh, its contribution to language design, um, there's been no prior formalization of, of these formulas, um, and the, the new thing that we get beyond um, R's existing syntax is that we can define priors um, such, you know, using this D syntax here to put distributions into the model, and we can also have hierarchical models. So this recursive syntax is, um, is new and is not present in R. You can't do that in R. Uh, in the paper, I, I commend you to go look at the paper if this has got you interested in this lovely uh, calculus. Um, we've got a type, type system and a type preserving formal semantics. It's very cool. There's a beautiful equational theory that is really neat, and I really hope I can tell you about it, but there's just no time in this, in this slot. Um, and we can use that to uh, uh, get uh, re uh, regressions down to a normal form. So very surprisingly, although it's very useful to have hierarchical uh, recursive uh, models, uh, they can actually be eliminated. So you can always rewrite a hierarchical model in terms of a non-hierarchical model, but you lose a lot of structure, and it's harder to write the, the, the sort of single level thing. So if you look in stats textbooks, they actually do this. They say, oh, well, there's this hierarchical model, but you can also rewrite it in this way. But they don't really have um, any sort of formal way of, of sort of showing the equivalence of these things. And our equational theory does that. So you know, go check that out. And we also go through and explain uh, the notations used by these packages and how they can be turned into the calculus. But, so that's the calculus, fantastic. But I wanted to go beyond that. Um, I wanted to um, actually add this to a probabilistic programming language. Um, so there's lots of these. Um, I've got a list here. Um, my favorite, of course, is Tabular that we've been working on for a couple of years and we presented uh, two years ago uh, first at, at Popol. Um, so uh, as, as an exercise, we decided let's add uh, regression formulas to uh, Tabular and we get uh, Fabular, of course. Uh, what else could we call it? Um, so t but, but Fabular is really basically the Tabular language. Um, uh, but with the addition that we can model particular columns using regression formulas. So a very simple addition. So if you haven't seen tabular, tabular before, the key thing about it is that we, uh, we define, we, we use the, the schema of a data set um, as the basis for, a, uh, uh, for the probabilistic model. So we, add, we, we start from the relational schema and then we add probabilistic annotations. Um, and we've you know, got a nice syntax for doing that. And, and basically what Fabular is adding is the ability to take a column um, say like the column of student um, performances and just write a regression formula as the, as the model in, and, uh, and, and then it expands out to a lot of boilerplate in the original tabular language. So for example here um, I've got a, a classification problem and I, so each row here is a bunch of readings uh, and then you've got to classify, it is a, 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 and you're trying to classify whether the person from, we, from which these readings have been taken have got an illness or not. So you're trying to predict why here. And, and notice this is a Boolean, not a real number. So regressions in the regression calculus always produce real value, you know, continuous, um, or continuous real values. Um, okay. Uh, and so we, we have here a, uh, uh, a regression model for Z, a hidden variable, which is a real number. And basically the idea is if it's more than, more than zero, we want to say yes. And if it's below zero, we want to say no. Um, and so we, we, we can turn turn Z into a Boolean by just asking in tabular whether, so this is ordinary tabular here, we just asked whether Z is greater than zero or not, and here we've got the fabular expression, which expands out to all this stuff. Um, and so you can easily play with this in various ways and get different stuff up here, 
um, as, as you've seen. And so we, we hope in this way we've got the benefit of, of our syntax within the language. Um, let me show you another quick example, and then I will conclude to take questions. Um, the, what I want to do in this slide is take, show a big model. And um, what I've done is I've made it a bit simpler by adding regressions. Because it turns out that regressions are, are great on their own, but they're also a very common component of, of, linear, of, of, of probabilistic models. So here, you, I know you can't see it. This is a, a movie recommender. And it's got a table of users, a table of movies, and a table of, of ratings. And I've made it rather shorter by using regressions. And you know, if you go and look at the details of this, um, we've got a regression here that's defining trait vector for each user, another one defining a trait vector for each movie, and then down here, um, another use of, of regressions. So it's nicely making, uh, taking the boilerplate away from, from tabular models. So we find it quite useful in, in um, simplifying our uh, sort of corpus of public programs. Here's my conclusion slide. Um, what I've done here is introduce the new regression calculus. And then secondly, I've shown you how we can add it to a probabilistic programming language to get many of the benefits of our formulas within probabilistic programming. Um, and we've, uh, we've got ideas for adding them into other languages. So if anyone's interested, you can ask me, tell me about how to add regressions to Stan. Um, um, so that's a potential question you might ask. Um, otherwise, I will, I will stop there and be happy to take questions. Thank you. that. Um, so here is... <laughs> so, uh, so we have a draft of how to add it to Stan. And uh, roughly speaking, this is the benefit you get. So Stan is a really popular language. There's lots of models. Uh, it, it's a descendant of Bugs, which is the first ever probabilistic programming language from 94. So I think there's thousands of models been written in, in, in Stan. Um, and a great many of them are regressions. So it turns out that you know, we, we did a bit of a study and we get a lot of compression. And you end up with something like this, which I think is a lot, I mean, so I'm not going to try and explain this to you, but it's, it's a lot more digestible than the uh, before version. You know, it's a nice small thing, you, you, you get the benefit of R. Hi, I'm Chris Rose. I'm at Two Sigma, which is a hedge fund. So. Okay. One thing that's curious here is that it's, you had one slide where you, oh, it's there as well, the bar. The vertical bar, right? The vertical bar, yes. Which is almost like an APL style matrixification uh, thing going on there. Do you know how general this can be done? Is it just simple indexing, or can you do it uh, more rich than that? It, it's, I mean, it, I'm, I'm not sure I completely understand the question. It, 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 it's, it's well, you, you, what you do is you factor out a, a copy for each state, right, in this case? Yes. So, yes. Um, so that's a kind of an indexing going on? Yes, it, 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 it takes the regression on the left, which will define some number of coefficients. Yeah. So, so, the, it, so the, question is could, the question is, could you throw in full relational algebra there or something like that? Um, With, uh, you know, indexing joins? Things like that. That's a good question. Um, I I have to think about that. What I would say is you can nest them, so you can yes. you can get an array and then you can get you know a, a double indexed array and a cube and so forth. Yes, indeed, you could. Yes, that's um, that was what I mean. That's what I'm getting at here. Uh, that we've now. No, no, it's a good question. Uh, the, the, um, uh, there has been some work on synthesizing probabilistic programs, and I think I think this could be a good way to go because the the uh, the, 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 the the you know the, the formulas are, are capturing a lot of common patterns. You know that, that people want to want to use. So indeed, doing some sort of green search over the the formulas to try and find a, a good fitting model seems. A nice project. 